we praise your name. God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that is due your name. God, we humbly come this morning. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to walk into your house once again. God, we come in with excited hearts, Father God. We come in with expected spirits, Father God. We come in knowing that you have already met us here in this place. God, we make room for you to move. God, move us out of the way and have your way like never before. Touch every person that will walk through our doors and watch us online. God, I pray that Holy Spirit would have his way. God, we say move. God, we say speak. God, we say heal. We say deliver. We say set free. We say save souls. Move us out so that you can do what needs to be done. God, be in every word that is sung, every word that is said, and everything that takes place in this service today. God, we hand it over to you and decree that the best is yet to come. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Mount Zion. Praise the Lord, Mount Zion. It is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. I'm glad that you chose to be with us. I've chosen you. I'm glad that you've chosen to come and watch us online. Today we pray that the glory of the Lord fills your heart. Hallelujah. And fills his place. Amen. Amen. We've come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We've come to lift him up and to give him honor. Hallelujah. We have come to give him praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Those of us who will stand, stand to your feet and let's just lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah.
unto God with a voice of triumph. Our God is wonderful. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. The truth of the word. Tell him that no matter what you try, God's got me. Hallelujah. I'm never going back. Hallelujah. You have rescued my life. Yes, yes, yes. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. Oh, you.
even right now hallelujah just to lift up your voices hallelujah even if it's lift the resolve that I'm never going back I won't go back I can't go back hallelujah God has done too much for me hallelujah his blessings have been too good his mercy has been too great hallelujah I won't go back God I can't go back Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for pulling us out, for keeping us out, and for taking us out. Amen. As we remain in this spirit of worship, Brother Ryan Williams will lead the church in prayer. For anyone that would like to come to the altar, it is open. you for all that you've done for us and all that you'll do for us. I thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day. Lord, I pray for forgiveness for all our transgressions. And furthermore, I pray for all those who have lost loved ones or are going through something. Lord, I pray for a great school year. And lastly, I pray that you bless this service and congregation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Brother Quentin and Antoine Rogers will come with our scripture. Good morning, Mount Zion. Today's scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. to him you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the great and first commandment and the second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets glory be to the Father Good morning, Mount Zion, and good morning, Mount Zion Online. Welcome to our back-to-school service. Amen? Parents excited that students are getting back to school? Educators, are we excited that we're going back to school? Woo! Amen. We thank God that he has brought us this far and we can have a school to go back to. Amen. 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 Um, just before our pastor comes with our welcome and announcements, I would just like to highlight our young people and our educators for this upcoming school year. If you are, if you are present, if you can stand. First, we have... Sister Ariel Williams. Ariel will be transitioning from M3 at Sands Middle School to S1 at the Barclay Institute. One of her goals is to continue to be her best and to understand that that is enough and okay. Alexia Henry. Alexia is transitioning from grade seven to grade eight at the Bermuda Institute. One second. And one of her goals is to get all A's in all of her classes. Yeah. Antoine Burgess. Right. Yeah. Antoine is transitioning from primary two to primary three at the West End Primary, yeah. and he would like to make more friends. <laughs> Cole Eversley. Curl is transitioning into his last year at CB's daycare. He is aiming to be better at sharing and kinder to his older brother and sister. <laughs> Dallas Richards will be transitioning from primary one to primary two at Summers, sorry, at Summers, Summers Primary. Her goal is to be more confident in reading and to increase her knowledge. All right. 
Josiah DeGrilla Tucker. He is transitioning from primary five to primary six at Paget Primary School, and he would like to be better at math. Hannah DeShield will be moving from year three to year four at the BHS, and she would like to read daily and complete 20 minutes of doodle math every night. Hayes Emery is moving from primary four to primary five at the Port Royal Primary, and he is endeavoring to stay focused and to be the best that he can be. Imani Deal will be moving from primary three to primary four at Daltony Primary School, and she is aiming to strive, grow, and succeed in math. Isaiah Dill will be moving from primary one to primary two at Daltony Primary School, and he would like to get better at reading and learn more about jet skis. Isla Philpott. Isla will be transitioning from primary two to primary three at the Port Royal School, and she is aiming to do her best. Ivy Eversley will be transitioning from primary two to primary three at the Port Royal Primary, and she is aiming to become a math whiz and enter more art competitions. Jacob Butterfield, he's flying in today, will be transitioning from primary four to primary five at Port Royal, and he's aiming to be successful and kind to others. Liam Butterfield, Liam will be moving from primary one to primary three at the Port Royal Primary, and he's aiming to be more focused and to continue to be the leader that he is. <laughs> London Aversley. London is transitioning from year six primary to year seven secondary, so that's P6 to M1 at the Work Academy. He is aiming to improve his creative writing skills and to become a leading girl scorer and MVP for PHC like his daddy was at his wow. age. <laughs> Malay Philpot. Malay is transitioning from Treetops to Nursery to Lagoon Park Preschool. She's aiming to have fun learning and to meet new friends. Mara Butterfield will be transitioning from primary two to primary three at the Port Royal Primary. She's aiming to work hard and to be kind to everyone. Marlon Nico Harvey is transitioning from M3 at Sand Second Middle School to S1 at the Barclay Institute. He's aiming to adjust to his new school. Amen. Amen. Micah Waldron. Micah is transitioning from Forbes Sunshine Nursery to Sweet Pea Nursery. Micah's aim is to make it to preschool. Nyla Burroughs. Nyla is transitioning from primary six at Daltony Tucker to M1 at Sands Middle School. Her aim is to get good grades. Nathan Dill is transitioning from primary one to primary two at Daltony Tucker, and he's aiming to get better at adding and reading. Okay. Noah Smith is transi transitioning from year two to year three at the BHS. Nola Philpott will be transitioning from Treetops to Nursery to Southampton Preschool. Her goal is to make lots of new friends. Nyla Harvey will be transitioning from primary two to primary three at the Somerset Primary School, and her aim is to do well in all of her classes. Quinton Burgess will be transitioning from primary three to primary four at the West End Primary, and he wants to be the smartest kid in his class. Ryan Proctor will be transitioning from Lagoon Park Preschool to primary one at West End Primary. Her goal is to make new friends. Roger Williams, 
will be transitioning from year 11 at the Claremont School in UK to the sixth form at Trinity School in the UK. He would like to be successful in all of his exams. Ryan Williams, transitioning from year 10 to year 11 at Work Academy. His aim is to be committed to studying and doing the best on his GCSEs. Saya Smith will be transitioning from M3 at Sands Middle School to S1 at the Barclay Institute. Her goal is to be have a successful first year in senior school. Sunia Place will be transitioning from S1 to S2 at the Barclay Institute. Santi Smith. Santi will be transitioning from primary three to primary four at the Patrick Primary School. And her aim is to be Raz Queen and Spelling Bee Champion in her class again for this school year. And our final student, I believe, is Tobiah Goodchild. Tobiah will be transitioning from year one to year two, that's year 10 to year 11, at Soltis Grammar School. His aim is to get high grades on his GCX, GCSE exams. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but Mount Zion is blessed to have some of the best educators on the island. Both current and retired. So we just want to acknowledge our current educators and those that work in the school system very briefly. Reverend Dion. <laughs> I will be transitioning from the Autism Spectrum Disorder teacher at Delwood to a learning support teacher at Dame Marjorie Bean Hope Academy. My goal for the, or one of my goals for this year is to work with integrity and to continue to have fun as I empower, encourage, and facilitate growth in my students. Shout out to my co-workers who came this morning, amen. And also my past co-worker. Next we have our very own Aunt Kalmar Richards. who is the leader of all the schools, all the schools on the island as the commissioner of education. Reverend Lashana Smith will be transitioning from the S1 team to the S2 team as the educational therapist at the Barclay Institute. One of her goals is to ensure that her students feel more loved, seen, and empowered to do and be their best. Amen. <laughs> Margaret Forbes. Um, Peggy is the fearless owner of Forbes Sunshine Nursery. <laughs> Natasha Hurst. She is a teacher. Thank you. A teacher at Warwick Preschool, and one of her goals is to have and enjoy more outdoor activities like riding bikes with her <laughs> students. <laughs> Noreen Bartley. Noreen Bartley is a teacher at the Lagoon Park Preschool. One of her goals is to create a foundation and motivational platform for excellence in her students' in her students' educational process through the best practices. Quincy Smith. Quincy is a teacher at the Barclay Institute. And one of her goals is to have me time. Amen. Rhea Granado. Rhea will be transitioning from primary three to a primary five teacher at the Northlands Primary. One of her goals is to meet all of her lesson plan deadlines and to have fun teaching and learning. Sharice Rayner. Sharice Rayner is the preschool administrator at Lagoon Park Preschool. One of her goals is to ensure that all teachers reach full fidelity using the creative curriculum. Sierra Bellowette is still home with her precious. 
She is transitioning from year four classroom teacher to a learning support teacher at BHS. One of her goals is to inspire her students to do the best that they can be. Terry Henry is the music teacher at Northlands and Gilbert Primary. One of his goals is to develop, nurture, and expose the hidden and unknown musical talents of every student. And finally, we have Tia Tankard, who is watching online. She is the office administrator at Sands Middle School. One of her goals is to get certified to update her skills. Like I said, in addition to the current educators, we have a number of past educators who have either retired or who have left, left the system to do other things, but we thank you all for your service. We thank you all just for your measure for how you continue to show up for Bermuda's future. If you work in or have worked in the education system in any form, may you please stand. Amen. So once again, thank you to those in the congregation and thank you to all of those online. Thank you to our leader. Without you, there is no us. Thank you for all that you do. And we look forward to an awesome. We look forward. We look forward to an awesome school year. A brother just whispered in my ear that there was an educator that did not stand up. So if we can all ask Mr. Dwight Jackson to please stand. <laughs> Dwight Jackson is an adaptive physical education teacher for the Bermuda Public School System. Thank you, sir, for all that you do. And Dwight, sorry, yes, Dwight is the teacher at, it's not building, but principal at Perform to Learn Nursery and Preschool. Amen. Educators all around, we praise God for you. I now ask our pastors to come forth with our welcome and announcement. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, come on, give God a hand clap of praise for our educators. Amen. Um, uh, Mount Zion has a proud uh, legacy of educators, amen, and as we uh, heard all those names read out, amen, it continues, amen, and our kids are in, in incredible, great, and capable hands, amen, and it is our prayer uh, to for not only our students, but for all of our educators and those who uh, work in the system at any capacity, uh, that God will bless you more than you can imagine this year, and that God will cause you you uh, to be impactful. Amen. Uh, that when you walk in the room, as my wife says, the purposes of God will walk in the room with you. Amen. Know that you are change agents, you are life impactors, you are world changers. Amen. And your classroom is your pulpit. Amen. And so allow God to use you um, in those places and in those spaces to make a difference uh, in the lives of uh, this generation. Amen. As we uh, seek to educate our leaders, our educators, our doctors, our lawyers, our engineers, our scientists, uh, and just, you know, just people who be good citizens. Amen. Sometimes we, we just need some good citizens. Uh, amen. And so uh, we praise God for you and we thank you uh, for your service. Amen. And, you know, it. listen, I'm one of those parents. Um, I love being a parent, but I am so happy that school is going back in. Amen. There is a special anointing uh, on teachers. Amen. I don't know how you how you do it. Amen. Uh, but you you do it, and uh, we praise God for you. And so uh, your, your your summer break uh, was well deserved. Now teachers, it's time to go back to school. <laughs> Amen. But we praise God for each and every one of you. 
And we thank you for tuning in. Uh, for those that are watching online, thank you for gathering uh, with us this morning in worship. It's so good to see all of your faces in the place. It's good to see so many of you uh, online. And we greet you uh, in the joy of Jesus. Uh, truly, the spirit of the living God is in this place. And if you're here today and if you don't have a church home, we want you to prayerfully consider us here at Mount Zion. Um, as always, uh, Mount Zion would love to be your church family. I would love the privilege uh, to be your, uh, your pastor. Uh, we want you to consider us uh, because at Mount Zion, we believe that anybody can become a new person in Jesus Christ. So no matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, what you did last night, what you woke up doing this morning, that God still has an incredible plan and purpose for your life and God still wants to use you for his glory and I want you to know uh, my brothers and my sisters that no matter where you are on your life's journey at Mount Zion you'll find a people you'll find a church you'll find a pastor where you would be welcome and where you would be loved finally we want you to consider us here at Mount Zion because Mount Zion is simply the what best place to be on a Sunday morning. It is the best place to be, period. Amen. So do me a favor, turn to your neighbor, look your neighbor, or if you don't have a neighbor, find one, look him in the eye and say, neighbor, so good to see your face in the place. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Um, uh, again, uh, and this is our, our heartfelt prayer. Something said, something done in the context of this worship experience uh, will bless you, would encourage you, would strengthen you, and leave you closer and more connected to God and to uh, one another. Amen. Just by way of announcements, we want to shout out to uh, baby Mateo. Amen. Uh, he represented Mount Zion in the baby contest. I'm, is it baby? Yeah, baby contest. Amen. Uh, Bermuda Conference Women's Missionary Society baby contest uh, on yesterday. Amen. And uh, Mount Zion had... He came, he came first. Amen. He came first. Amen. Praise God. All right. Mateo is a champion already. Amen. He came first. Amen. And we thank um, all the, uh, the missionaries uh, who came out to support um, baby uh, Mateo and Sister Tanea. Uh, uh, amen. And Brother Macau. Macau. Amen. Um, uh, praise God. Another baby news. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, we announced that Sister Camille was blessed with a, a baby girl. Amen. I got word uh, this week that Sister Allison Otterbridge, amen, had a baby boy. Uh, amen. And so we celebrate with Brother Alvin and... Uh, uh, Sister Myrna, amen, uh, grandparents two times over uh, within a couple of weeks, amen, uh, so, uh, amen, and so we praise God uh, for, uh, for, uh, for them, and we pray God's continued health and, and, and happiness uh, for both mom and child, amen, uh, so if Sister Allison is watching, uh, we're rooting for you, all right, well, Baby Tice, amen, amen. Baby Tice, amen. Praise God, praise God. I want to get it right, amen. And so uh, we pray that the continued help, uh, amen. Good to report, um, some of you know Brother George had an accident a few weeks ago on his way to church, and he, um, he went to the hospital, was out of the hospital. Um, he ended up going back to the hospital, amen. But uh, I want to say everybody know he's back home now, amen. So um, uh, keep him uh, in, in prayer. Uh, please keep in prayer, Sister uh, Betty uh, Richardson. She lost her son uh, uh, this, um, well, yeah, this past week. And um, he will be f uh, funeralized this coming Wednesday. Um, I don't have the time. But please keep her uh, and her family uh, in prayer. Amen. Also, let us keep in prayer as a community. Uh, the... Um, uh, uh, the family of the uh, of the uh, senior who had been missing, uh, uh, the results did not turn out uh, the way that we um, was hoping and praying for. Amen. So we want to pray for um, the continued strength and comfort for. Um, I, I can't pronounce the name. Uh, Nick 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 Klaus. I want to keep saying Nicholas. Nick Klaus uh, of uh, uh, Sister Nick Klaus. Okay. Let us keep. 
um, her and praying. Just keep our community in prayer as well. Amen. Uh, please continue to lift up, uh, lift up uh, Reverend D on this Wednesday. She will be preaching at Allen Temple uh, for their pre-Women's Day service. Amen. At 7.30 p.m. Um, it's going to be in person. I'm not too sure if it's it's streaming, but please uh, support if you can. Amen. As we as she uh, brings the word this coming Wednesday at uh, Allen Temple. Um, also, uh, the, the Women's Committee. Um, is Sister Baronet here? Oh, oh, Sister Karen's here. Amen. I saw Sister Karen. Amen. They had a PALS uh, discussion this past uh, Saturday, and my understanding, I was bird whispered in my ear that it was well attended. Amen. Um, over uh, 30 people were in attendance, um, and uh, they were given some helpful insight and helpful um, information. And so we thank you guys uh, for leading in that regard. Amen. Uh, also, please note in your bulletin on the 29th um, of this month, the last Sunday of this month, um, uh, under the leadership of our, our lay, uh, we are taking our worship uh, experience uh, to Death Valley. Amen. We're going to be praising um, in the park. Uh, um, and uh, we're going to test. We, uh, we want to make it's going to be an awesome service. We are inviting the community. And so uh, we're asking that you would tell your neighbors, amen, uh, bring their chairs, bring their uh, tents, uh, bring the cars, park up, amen. We're going to be at uh, Death Valley and we're going to have a good time uh, in the Lord, amen. Um, for those that connect with us online uh, over these next couple of weeks, we're going to be testing, amen, to see. Um, we're going to try to do our very best to stream it live, amen, um, from, from Death Valley. But Mount Zion will be praising in the park uh, this Sunday, I'm sorry, the last Sunday of this month uh, on the 29th, amen? Uh, so please take note of, uh, please take note of that. Also on Saturday, the 21st of uh, September at 10 a.m., um, the First Episcopal District is going to be having a welcome service uh, for our new Episcopal leadership um, at Mount Zion Amy Church in New Brunswick, uh, New Jersey. Um, and that service will be uh, streamed live, and that information will be in the bulletin uh, on next week. Amen. And, and there might be a way. Uh, that um, uh, uh, those of us here in Bermuda will be able to send our well wishes and our welcomes to our new bishop and new Episcopal supervisor. Amen. So look out for the information. Uh, but these are your notices. Uh, please secure a bulletin and govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Uh, amen. Any other notes? Yes, our Kids for Christ this morning will be for our nursery and preschool students, so those that are four and under, as we want our primary, middle, and high school, high school students to hear our back-to-school message by our commission. So again, that's our nursery and preschool, four and under, will be going down with Aunt Natasha today for Kids for Christ. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Amen. It is uh, given time. There's an opportunity uh, to give to the Lord a portion of that which God has so <clears throat> richly blessed us with. If you, uh, well, if you would like to give online and you have not yet done so, you can do so. Uh, the given information for those that are uh, present uh, in the sanctuary is in the back of your bulletin. For those that are online, our media team is going to place that information up on the screen. Um, that would allow you to give your tithe and your offering online. I have already given my tithe and offering online, doing my part uh, to save a few trees. Amen. Uh, but if you are prepared to give this morning, we want you to get your tithe, get your offering, and get it in your hand. Do the very best you can with that which God has blessed you with. Amen. Uh, let us lift it towards heaven and repeat after me. Uh, we are becoming a 100% tithing church. We are becoming a 100% tithing church. Uh, we have been blessed to receive. Therefore, we are blessed to give. Finally, Lord, I love you more than this. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we honor you for who you are. 
God, we thank you for another opportunity to give back to your portion of that which you have so richly blessed us with. Uh, God, as we bring our gifts, we do so in obedience to your word that tells us to bring into your storehouse the full tithe so that there might be meat in your house. And your promise to us is that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that we would not have room enough to receive it. God, your word says that you love a cheerful giver. So God, we give cheerfully today. And so God, as we give, we pray, God, that you would... Uh, do that which only you can do, that you would do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we can ask, think, and or imagine in every area of our life. God, we know that we can never beat your giving, no matter how hard we try. So bless us now, God, as we worship you through our giving. God, this is our prayer in the powerful name of Jesus. Let every heart say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We're going to remain seated. Amen. Uh, the first plate. As our usher service, the first plate is our tithe and offering. Uh, the second plate is our missionary. And it, oh, this oh, uh, uh, this Sunday the second plate will go to support our YPD. Amen. And so let us be uh, spirit led and generous in our giving. Amen. As our praise team, uh, the worship team leads us in uh, song.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you uh, for your faithfulness uh, in your uh, giving. Amen. Amen. We. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's just about preaching time, uh, uh, and we uh, have a preacher in the house in the person of our very own sister Kalmar Richards. Amen. And I'm going to invite. Uh, Reverend Dion to come and to introduce her formally, amen. Uh, she's no stranger to us, amen. Uh, and after uh, that, the, uh, your uh, praise team will lead us in a sermonic selection. And then the next voice you will hear will be the voice of God through the woman of God in the person of Sister Kalmar Richards. Sister Kalmar Richards, or known to me as Aunt Kalmar, um, from a very young age, I don't think I've ever told you this, but from a very young age, I've always admired Aunt Kalmar. She is one of the top three black women that I aspire to be Amen. with. Oh, sorry, Amen. aspire to be like. Amen. And growing up in my house, my mother was your mentee. Yes. And I just remember my mom was just talking about how much you did for her, and yet you still took care of your husband. You still took care of your children, and you still showed up for all of the other mentees under your remit. And I believe it's because of the way that you led, because of the way that you encouraged her, because of the way that you stood by her side, that she was the dynamic teacher that she was. Amen. And because of her, so by proxy, Amen. I am the teacher that I am today. Amen. So Amen. while she is the commissioner of education and she has a lot of students, a lot of teachers under her remit and has an awesome job to do. On Kalmar is a mighty and awesome woman of God. Amen. She is a leader, she is strong, she is an encouragement, and most of all, you are an inspiration to me Amen. in all that I do. So following the praise team, the next voice that we will hear will be that of our very own Sister Kalmar Richards. Please pray with and for her and open up your hearts to receive what I'm sure is a rhema and on-time word from God.
together to hear your voice. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord. We need you and no other God. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord. Speak your truth to us, O Lord, speak, that we might hear. Lord, speak, Lord. Open the blind eyes, God. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord. Open the deaf ears, Lord. Everybody, declaring my love for the Holy Trinity, acknowledging my and our sovereign God, Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, Son of the living God, Holy Spirit, who is my comfort and my counselor. I can tell you that I don't know where I would be without the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that I am nothing without the Trinity. I acknowledge and pay honor to the phenomenal and impactful and powerful ministerial team at Mount Zion AME Church, my church. Praise God, if they can stand. Our leader, Pastor Reverend Dr. Jakimo Smith, First Lady Reverend Lashana Smith, Reverend Yvonne Thompson, remain standing, Reverend Dion Green, Evangelist Ross Smith, and Brother Terry Henry. These are the leaders of Mount Zion AME Church. I just thank God for you. And I pray that God will continue to bless you as you pour out into our lives and the lives of others in our community. To the officers and my fellow members of Mount Zion AME Church, I want you to know that I love the ministerial team and I also love each and every one of you. And I just thank God for each of you and how you have blessed me more than you can imagine. I want to give special honor to my magnificent and marvelous and just amazing mother, Sister Marguerite Jones, who could not be here today. But Mama knows I love her, and I know that Mama loves me. She will be 93 in December. And I thank God 
for how he is blessing her and continuing to use her because age is just a number. My mother is going 93 and she is still a prayer warrior. She is still declaring the word of God. And so I want to encourage you, no matter what your age, to continue to praise, to press and declare the word of God. I also want to give honor and acknowledge one of the best and most loving mother-in-laws in the world, Sister Gilda Richards. I don't know about you, but I have the best mother-in-law. She has been a beautiful example, and she loves me, and I love her. She prays for me, and I pray for her, and I thank God for her every day. God bless you, and I love you. And to my children, my three amazing children, Tamar Richards, who is just like his daddy, and I'm thankful for that, Danielle Williams, and my son-in-law, Kaiwan Williams. I am just blessed to have such beautiful, loving, and caring children. And I truly give thanks for them. And I can tell you that Tamar and Denny are a blessing to me. Kaiwan, Danielle's husband, is a blessing to me. And I'm so thankful for them. And today, I am remembering the love of my life, my husband Terrence, who has gone on to glory, but I was so blessed to be his wife. He was the best husband and best friend that I could ever have. And whenever I was preparing to share a message and bring a word, he was always encouraging me, talking about the message with me and cheering me on. And I, I miss him every day. And I thank God for his life and his testimony as a Christian husband and man. And to all of my colleagues and friends who have taken the time to come today, I see you, I appreciate you, and I thank you for all that you are doing on behalf of God's children, his precious gifts, and in education. And I honor the parents who are here today. Can you stand, people? the parents who have brought their children? Please stand so that we can acknowledge you, or the grandparents who have stepped in, or the godparents who have stepped in to bring children today. I want to thank you so much. I pray that God will continue to bless you. One of the best things you can do is to bring your children or grandchildren into the house of the Lord. I want to also acknowledge, and if they can stand, God's precious gifts to us, the children. Every child who is school age, please stand. These are the precious gifts that God has given to us. I pray that God will continue to bless you and every goal that you have set for this year, that you will achieve it and that he will give you your heart's desire. It truly is an honor to stand before you today, and it's, it's a very serious task, and I pray that you will be blessed by what the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I am just so thankful, God, that you saw that a moment would come in time where I would be called to give a word. Father, I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you for laying it on the heart of our pastor, Lord God. And I just pray, God, that you will, your Holy Spirit will increase in me right now, God. I am decreasing, Father. Holy Spirit, lead and speak and ensure that what thus said the Lord comes forth in the name of Jesus Christ. We present the word and we present the works. Be with me as I deliver today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Jesus. 
I want to thank the Burgess boys, and they are such remarkable young men, I tell you. They make their presence felt every Sunday, especially when pastor says we're what? And they shout out, the best place to be on a Sunday morning. And I want to thank them for just their excellence in delivering and sharing the word of God this morning. This is training ground, and they delivered with excellence. So I bless them and their parents this morning. And they shared from Ephesians 2, chapters 8 to 10. But I will be zooming in on chapter 10 this morning for the message that God has laid on my heart. Ephesians uh, 2, chapter 10. Now, the English Standard Version of the Bible says, for we, and whenever I say we, I am talking about our children. So I'm going to uh, just insert children whenever I am talking about we, because I really want us to focus on our children this morning. So Ephesians 10, the English Standard Version says, for our children, grandchildren, God children, students are his workmanship. They were created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that they, our children, should walk in them, meaning the good works. The New International Version says that our children are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for them to do. The New Living Translation, and I love the New Living Translation, it says that our children are God's masterpiece, that he has created our children anew in Christ Jesus so that they can do good things that he planned for them so very long ago. And then the King James Version says that our children are his workmanship, that they are created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that they should walk in them. We need to recognize who we have with us. We need to recognize who we have in our households. We need to recognize who we have in our schools. When the word declares that they are his masterpiece, they are his handiwork, crafted and determined by God before they came into this earth, before they were in your womb. We need to recognize who we have in our midst. We need to recognize that our children were created in and unto Christ Jesus, that God planned in advance that what our children would be. He planned in advance the plan that he had for them. He planned in advance their purpose and their calling. We have to understand who we have in the midst of us. God created them. He ordained. God established. He decreed and he said it is so for each of them. And he created them to do great work. Good work. Practical acts of love. Works and tasks and things that would be of loving benefit and of service to others. Acts of helping. Acts that would honor God and bring him glory. God has given us children who are masterpieces. Look at a child who is near you and tell them you are God's masterpiece. And you also tell them that you are God's masterpiece because he created you as well. 
One of the best gifts that we can give to children, and praise God, it comes at no cost, is the word. It is the greatest gift that we can give to our children. You don't have to dig in your pocket to find money for it. It is available, and it is true. It is infallible, and the word is life, and it is alive. And so what we need to do is to give the word as a gift to God's masterpieces to remind them that he has created them for a purpose and that he has created them to do good works. We must teach our children that particular uh, scripture. And I challenge each of you to have your children memorize Ephesians 2.10 and declare it to you every day and for you to declare it to them every day. Every child is God's purpose. And we must at all costs protect God's purpose. And that's what I'm going to focus on in the word today. It's important for us to protect the masterpieces, the handiwork, the purpose of God. Because there are people who will not understand, who will not accept, who will not agree, who will not acknowledge that your child or children are the masterpieces that God has created. They will not accept, they will want to ignore that they are amazing, that they are phenomenal, that they are brilliant, that they are talented, that they are indeed the image of God the Father manifested in the flesh. They will refuse to accept that God has ordained it, that they will do good works. He has decreed it and declared it. And because of that, we collectively must take responsibility to protect God's purpose. Parents, it is your responsibility to protect God's purpose and call on your children's lives. God parents who said you will step in as parents. It is your responsibility to work with parents to protect the call and the purpose of children's lives. Grandparents, you have the title parents in your name. It is your responsibility to work with, not interfere, work with parents to protect God's purpose and the masterpiece in your lives. It is the family's responsibility to protect the purpose of children. It is the church's responsibility to protect the purpose of God's children. It is even the school's responsibility and the Department of Education's responsibility to protect the purpose of children's lives. Because the purpose of children's lives is tied up in their gifts. It's tied up in their talents. It's tied up in their interests. It's tied up in their strengths. And we heard, or Reverend Dion read out about the goals of children. Those are the desires of their hearts, but they tell us some of the things that they are interested in doing. And very often we start seeing at an early age the purpose within our children starting to come forth, starting to evolve. And so we have a responsibility to be the gatekeeper for the purpose, the gatekeepers for the purpose, the gatekeeper keeper for the talents, the strengths, and the gifts of our children. And we have a responsibility to protect God's purpose. So there will be people who will even fail, as I said, to acknowledge your child's purpose. They will make your child feel, or some people make children feel, as if they have no value and they have no purpose. We need to declare and straighten out lovingly in those instances people who are telling our children they have no purpose, that you're not important, that you will not amount to anything because it is not true. I believe the word of God when he declares they are masterpieces. And if we choose to look at them through that lens 
And from that perspective, we will treat them differently and we will do things differently for them. Don't allow people, don't allow anyone to mess with your child's mind by telling them they have no purpose, they have no calling, and they will not amount to, amount to anything. You bounce right back at them and you declare in their face with power and authority and boldness and you tell them that my child is a masterpiece. My child is a handiwork of God, and my child was created to do great work and good works and good things for Jesus. There are people who will try to distract your children from their purpose. They will try to lead them astray and, and take them off course. And parents, you've got to be very careful about who you allow your children to be around. I remember when my children were growing up, and I think they were still primary school age, and we watched, you know, who they were associating in the neighborhood. But we began to notice some things about one of the individuals in the neighborhood. And I very nicely and Christian-like went to that household, and I said, you know what? My son won't be coming to your house anymore. And I said, and your son won't be coming to mine. I wish him well, but we have to step in and protect our children. Too many people want to allow their children to be around others who are not going to be moving them in the direction of their purpose. There's nothing wrong with looking out for your child. You don't need to be afraid to go to somebody else and say, it's not going to work. I don't think that our children are moving in the same direction. I don't think that this is going to help my child to move into what God has calling them to do. Some people will try to diminish or devalue the purpose. See, God calls different children for different things. And I remember many, many years ago sitting on the edge of my bed and God was just revealing to me that everyone is of value and that he has different callings, different purposes for each individual. Some may be a once-off purpose. Some purposes may be in this season and then that season and then another season. Some people may just have a big purpose by man's standards. By God, it's still needed. And some people may just have a normal or small purpose by man's uh, standards. But with God, it's still necessary and needed. And so sometimes people will try to diminish the purpose of children. They may say what they are bringing forth in their heart. That's it. That's all. That's what you want to do. But God lays purpose in children's hearts. And we must never diminish the purpose that God has given to our children. If God has given it, then it's important, it's necessary, and somebody in the future is waiting for it. And then there are people who will want to block your child's purpose. And you know when that happens? You have to stand up and be an advocate for your child. But you also must create opportunities. You see those gifts and talents in your children. I'm sure you've been seeing them from an early age. So you create opportunities for your children. And I saw many in mind. They were good at sports, so they participated in many sporting activities. And I don't know about uh, some of you, but I've seen on Facebook here recently where many of the athletes are proclaiming the word of God. They are declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord. They are putting John 3.16 on their forehead. And when they are being interviewed after the game, they are saying, I am a Christian. I am living for God. That's purpose. So if your children are showing strengths in sports, that may be part of their final purpose. We don't know, but create an opportunity for it if others aren't. My children were good at art, and I remember 
uh, we, we arranged for an art teacher uh, to teach them uh, one afternoon per week after school. Now, some of you may say, I don't have the funds for that. And I was thinking about that and having a little chuckle uh, with God around that. You know what? Some of us spend a lot of money each week purchasing our lunch and purchasing food instead of preparing it at home. And then I said, but you know what, Lord? We adults can go without food. We can fast during that time. And if you have to use the money to pay for something that's going to benefit your child, then go without fast in the name of Jesus and do that. So create those opportunities. And because they loved art so much, I didn't wait for somebody else. We had a little art exhibit at our house. So you can create opportunities to display the gifts and purpose and calling and talents and interests and strengths of your children. And you can start doing it right now. You can start doing it with your three-year-olds and your four-year-olds up. But create that opportunity because not everybody's going to support your child's purpose. They may want to squash it and block it, but your responsibility, create those opportunities. There are people who are going to want to compare your child's purpose to the next. And you know, we have people who do that all the time. Oh, look at what so-and-so's child is doing. Look at what Mrs. So-and-so's child or his child is doing. Don't fall into that trap. God has indicated that the calling is unique. Every human being that comes into this world is unique. I find it fascinating that with every individual that lives, the configuration, those little lines on our fingertips, no two are the same. And it's been scientifically proven. No two individuals are the same. We don't need to compare purpose. We don't have time to compare purpose. We just need to focus on our child's purpose. And one of the things I told our, my, our children come along, you don't need to compare yourself to anybody. Because when we start comparing to somebody else, we start falling up short and thinking that we can't meet them all. So don't worry about comparing your child's purpose to somebody else's purpose. You focus on your child's purpose. Some parents think the call and the purpose is just too big for what they can imagine or afford. And so I remember hearing stories as a teacher where children said, you know, I would say, listen, I'm expecting great things from you. I'm expecting you to obtain a degree and to get certification and I need you to be speaking that as a student and I would have children say to me Miss Richards I don't know because my mama can't even afford to buy my uniform and that's where the community needs to come in that's where the church needs to come in that's where the government needs to come in because some of our children have great call and big purpose. And when I think about my life, I thank God for his goodness and his provision. Because most of you have heard of Jones's village. My maiden name is Kelmar Jones. And so my family were from Jones's village. And you know what? God provided. My mother was a stay at her mother. She was there for the children, providing quality care for us. My father was a taxi driver who had his own business. But I said, Mama, from the age of seven, Daddy, from the age of seven, I want to be a teacher. Not once did my parents say that you're not going to be a teacher. My parents started saving. My mama started praying. And praise God, she brought forth a scholarship. And I was blessed to go to school and blessed to get my degrees to become an educator. Praise God. So no purpose is too big. If God has planted it in your child's heart, then God will make provision for it because he's done it before. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 
And then lastly, there are some people who may force a purpose or try to force a purpose on your child for which your child isn't called to. Don't let people tell you what your child should be doing. You know your child. You see the strengths within your children. You know, I think about Tamar, who is just phenomenal at mathematics. We saw it early. We saw the skill in math early, and so we did what we could to develop that. I mean, there were people who may have said, oh, you know what? Uh, you need to be an accountant like your father. But Tamar came and he said, you know what? I'm interested in being an actuary. We never said you couldn't do that. We just were behind them. And Denny had many strengths, and we weren't quite sure. I mean, she was talented in sports, talented in the arts, talented as a writer, talented as business. But then she decided, you know what, I want to become an accountant. And so what we did, we just made sure that she was taking all of the business courses possible. We didn't force anything on them. Well, I did hint a little bit and said, are you interested in teaching? But, um, <laughs> but we stuck with what they wanted to do. I was hopeful but it just didn't come to pass until, mind you, two years ago, even though Tamar works full time, he took on the post. He is an adjunct professor at Bermuda College, so he teaches in the evenings during term two at Bermuda College. So I got a little bit of teaching in there. Our children, oh, they are amazing. Our children are masterpieces. That's what we have to see each day in the presence of our children. And we must do all that we can to protect the purpose of God. Watch your children closely. Listen to them carefully as you see purpose emerge. Affirm their purpose every day. Well, how can I do it, Sister Kalmar? Well, integrate it into your family's routines. Integrate it into your classroom's routines. But it can be done on a daily basis. God guard and protect their purpose so that they can bring God glory on earth and finish the work that he gave them to do. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. The plans of the Lord will stand firm forever, and the purposes, his children, the purposes of his heart through all generations. God says his purpose will stand, and he will do as he pleases. God has created masterpieces, handiwork, that he has allowed us to care for while they are on earth. Protect God's masterpieces and handiwork. Protect God's purpose. God bless you, everyone. Just before we have a corporate prayer, I want to offer everyone in here and everyone watching online the best gift that you can receive, and that's saying yes to Christ. If there is someone in here today or someone watching online and you have never said yes to Jesus, you've never confessed with your mouth that Christ died on the cross to save for your sin, and you may not have believed it in your heart, I want you to know that today can be that day. Today, you can say yes and receive that free gift and be back in right relationship with our Heavenly Father. As Sister Kalmar said, we are all masterpieces. We all have a purpose, and part of that purpose is being in right relationship with God. So if there is someone here today who has never said yes, and you would like to say yes today, the altar is open. The altar is also open for someone who would like to join this great church. 
to come under the leadership of a great pastor, a great first lady, and just be in community with a member, with members of Mount Zion who will love you and walk alongside you as you discover your purpose, as you walk masterfully in God's plan. The altar is open for you today to say yes to Mount Zion. And finally, I would like to ask all of our young people, ask all of our educators, ask their parents to come and stand behind them as we send you forth for this new school year and we ask our commissioner of education as we ask this mighty woman of God just to pray over us and to cover us so that we can truly be who God has created and ordained for us to be. So if all of our students, all of our educators, all of the parents can come stand behind their children as we go to God in prayer. Praise God. Please let your children come. We want to go before the throne of God to just present them. We want to declare some beautiful things over their lives and we want to ask for God's protection. We want to see your purpose because remember it was established before they were placed in your womb or your grandchildren's womb. We just have some beautiful, look at them. They are just beautiful children. And the parents, are the parents and grandparents here? Are the educators here? just want to pause before a moment before I go into uh, the prayer and I know we're focusing on children but I just want to just give thanks for the educators who are here but educators in general you just have no idea what it takes to be in a classroom and to be in a school they do some amazing work for your children and every time they come to mind I want to encourage you to reach out and encourage them and to do things for them that let them know that you love and appreciate them. Don't wait for a special international day. Do it on an ongoing basis. They need you. They need your encouragement. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you and I just thank you, Father. I thank you for your word, which is so pure, God. Your word, which is alive, God. Your word, which will accomplish, God, what you have determined, Father. Lord God, I thank you for every child around this altar, Lord God. And Father, I also ask you, God, as I pray, to just consider every child in Bermuda. Lord God, they are your masterpieces. I declare it in the name of Jesus. They are your workmanship, Lord God. And you crafted them and you made them and you formed them, Lord God, in their mother's womb. And you knew and you know the plans and the purpose, God, that you have for them, Father. And we thank you for purpose, God, because it is a compelling and it is a driving force, Lord God. And so for every child in the name of Jesus, God, we are declaring that their purpose will come forth, Lord God. We are declaring, God, that they will do good works, Lord. We are declaring, God, that their works will be excellent, Lord. We are declaring, God, that their works will be extraordinary, Lord God. We are declaring, God, that their works will be phenomenal, Lord God, and that they will bring you glory, Lord, and they will finish the work, God, that you have called them to do, Father. 
And in the name of Jesus, God, we ask for protection over their precious minds, Lord God, that you would have them thinking on things that are pure and are true, Lord God. Father, we ask for protection over their bodies, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that you would preserve their bodies, God, that you would keep their bodies pure, God, that you would protect their bodies from harm, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, we ask for protection, Lord, over their spirit, Lord God. And we pray, God, right now for their spiritual development, Lord God, that you would give them seeing eyes and hearing ears, God, so that they might understand whenever the word is coming forth. And Holy Spirit, in particular, I am asking you to be their help, to be their comfort, to be their counselor. We know you will be in the classroom with them. Help them to achieve those goals. Help them to get to the desires of their heart in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I am also calling forth every resource that every parent needs so that their children can excel by Christ Jesus. Bring in the funds, Lord God. Bring in the food, Lord God. Bring in the supplies, Lord God. Bring in the uniforms, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask that you would preserve purpose, that you would make it permanent, and that you would raise up the parents and the grandparents and the godparents and the school leaders and the school teachers and the school staff and the department of education staff and the church, God, to protect the purpose of these children. Father, we thank you for the parents and grandparents and school staff and all others who are here, Lord God. Bless them abundantly, Lord. Provide for every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, Lord God. Give them the desires of their hearts, Lord God. Give them great success with your masterpieces, your handiwork, and your workmanship, Lord God. And so we thank you and we praise you. And God, we expect to see you moving mightily, Lord God. We expect it, Lord God. One of the gifts you've given us, Lord God, is the gift of imagination, God. And I challenge each parent and I challenge each educator to see the masterpieces, God, and to see purpose coming forth and to see them achieving in the name of Jesus. Lord, and finally, just allow our children to have their best year ever our educators to have their best year ever and we thank you for it and we praise you we honor you we bow down before you and we give you glory for everything father in jesus name amen amen thank you father thank you lord god to god be the glory great and mighty and marvelous things he has done and he will do for our children and our educators. Reverend Lashana, uh, as she has prayed for us, uh, we know that our commissioner does not have an easy job, and so we want to pray for her. And so if you believe in the power of prayer, I'm going to invite you uh, to come and just stand with us or point your hand towards her, amen, as we pray and ask God to undergird her and to give her wisdom and to everything that she needs. And so we need prayer warriors. We need to cover her. And we know that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what she can think or imagine. God, thank you. God, we honor you for who you are. God, you are a keeper. God, you are a way maker. 
God, you are a very present help in times of trouble. Lord, you are an awesome God. And God, we thank you for this, your daughter, oh God. God, we thank you, God, that uh, God, that she God, that she is bold for you. God, that she loves you. God, that she is a trailblazer for you. A God, she stands up and stands out for you, oh God. And God, we ask in the name of Jesus, with all that is on her shoulders, God, we know that she does not carry it alone. God, that you are with her. And God, that you will never leave her nor forsake her. And God, we just come right now, God, placing her in your capable hands. God, knowing that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what she can think, ask, or imagine. And God, I simply ask, God, that you would meet this, your daughter, Kalmar. She may be our commissioner, but she is your daughter. And God, I pray, God, that you will meet her at the point of, your, of her deepest need. God, that you would be for her a good shepherd. God, that you would be for her more than enough. God, that you would be for her a way maker. God, I pray, God, that every room, God, that she walks in, every meeting, God, every difficult decision, God, that she has to make, God, everything, God, that she has to push back against and bring wisdom and sanity to, God, that you will continue to give her the strength and the wisdom and the boldness and the discernment, God, that she would need, oh God. God, that when she walks in a room, God, she knows that she's not walking in alone. God, that you have gone before her, oh God. God, I pray in the powerful name of Jesus, God, that you will raise up people around her. God, that will hold up her arms. God, that will pray for her. God, whose names don't need to be called. But God, that will call her name in prayer. God, that would stand with her. God, that will walk with her. God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, that you are her God. And God, that you are more than enough. And so, God, I pray, God, for that your joy would be hers. God, that your peace which surpasses all understanding, that it would be hers, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, that you order every one of her steps. God, that she would not look to the left nor to the right, God, but that she would keep her mind and her heart stayed on Jesus. God, we pray, God, at the, in a moment of need, God, that you will send a word. A word of clarity, a word of encouragement, a word of direction, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And God, you know what she stands in need of personally, God. She may mean so much for so many in this community. But God, I pray, God, that you would, again, meet her at the point of her deepest need. In the name of Jesus. And so, God, I pray for her strength. God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you, God, that for her life, not just her career, but for her life, God, that the best is yet to come. God, we thank you, God. We God, we pray for a fresh anointing, fresh touch, fresh strength, fresh vision. God, resilience, endurance, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for doing it. God, bless all those that are under her remit. God, bless this island. Bless this education system. God, you know what needs to be done. God, you've called her for such a time as this. And so, God, have your way. And God, we declare even now, no weapon formed against her shall prosper. She is covered. She is protected. God, she is blessed and highly favored. She is loved and valued. She is capable. God, for such a time as this, we thank you for bringing her into the kingdom. God, this is our prayer in the powerful name of Jesus. Let every heart shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen. minds are clear, let us stand for the vision and mission.
The vision of Mount Zion is to be an empowered and growing church whose members work together to lead positive and lasting change by connecting people to God and each other. The mission of Mount Zion is to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ and to develop dedicated disciples of the same in a loving and saving environment through faithful stewardship, relevant teaching, active community involvement, meaningful fellowship, effective evangelism, and dynamic worship. Let's praise God. God's workmanship created in Jesus Christ to do good works which God hath before ordained that they should walk in them be bold be courageous be steadfast and fight to protect God's purpose Remember, our children are God's masterpiece, called and preordained for good works. Protect God's purpose in and over their lives. Go and have an incredible week with an incredible God. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for worshiping with us. Remember, you are blessed of God. Walk in your blessings. Share your blessings. Be a blessing. Until next time, have an incredible week with an incredible God. The best is yet to come. God bless you.